Hi there, my name is Matt Stabile. You may recognize me from such videos as Guatemala, Mozambique, Cambodia, or Estonia. Now I may spend most of my time going to so-called backpacker destinations, but that doesn't mean that I don't go to places where other visitors go as well, such as here is the Yucatan in Mexico. The trick is you need to know how to get off the beaten path and see the rest of the area. Come along and I'll show you how to do that in this video. Just off the coast of Cancun is Isla Mujeres, which is a small island about 10 minutes by ferry. Isla Mujeres means Isle of Women. I'm pretty sure that's what it means. I took Spanish three times in my life and I'm not even sure, which is kind of embarrassing if you think about it. What does one wear to Isla Mujeres, you may ask? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure you don't find it at the gift shop at the dock. Truth be told, the ferry is not a party boat, but whoever let that stop anybody? Once there, you can rent a golf cart and explore the options the island has to offer, including snorkeling. A lot of snorkeling is crazy in East Lima House. Some really good reefs and a ton of fish. Some of the beaches you can buy fish food and drop it in front of you. I just did that and the fish at the first sight of me swarmed at me. It's kind of like the buffet bar Boca Raton around 12 o'clock on a Sunday. I'm not really scared of much. I'm not scared of snakes or spiders or heights. But there is one thing I really, really am afraid of and that's iguanas. So I just hope we don't run into any here. Embora por dentro eu esteja chorando, vou fingir alegria. Hang out with some of the locals on the island. Todo mal que me fez. An Isla Mujeres is the EIP, the Estación de Investigación Pesqueras, which is a non-profit where they raise baby turtles and then set them back out to sea to help the population out. Or if they're bad, soup. There's some really amazing turtles you can see here, as well as some more frightening sights. But best of all, if you ask, you can interact with the wildlife on display. Great thing to check out in Cancun if you're here is Park Palapas. There's a night market that goes on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. There's live music, dancing, and best of all, really, really good food. How delicious. Look that at it. Amazing. Mayonnaise, cojito, chili pepper, melted on there. It it's like barely boils, not too overcooked. It's so good. It has mayonnaise on it? Koba, about an hour west of Cancun, is one of the three major ruins in the region. You can rent a bike and explore this once major city that was home to over 50,000 people. And yes, watch where you're going. This is a classic example of the game Puk to Puk, which is the precursor to what we would maybe think of as basketball. Of course, this was used as a religious ceremony, whereas basketball is, well, I don't know why they play it, but anyways. Just like a lot of the other Mayan ruins in the region, Koba still is vastly uncovered. Even as you walk around today, you're only going to see about 5-10% to of what the city looked like. What's great about Koba is it's one of the few mine ruins where you're actually allowed to climb the temples versus Chichen Itza and nearby Tulum. This behind me is Grupo Noche Mall and it's only 42 meters high, which is going to be a breeze, I tell you. Warning, make sure you travel with somebody who has lots of energy, otherwise suffer the consequences. Right, I've got to say, much easier without carrying somebody. I think that was the right choice to let Kelly stay at the bottom. The 
The views over the jungle landscape are truly amazing and worth a hike up the temple, even in 100 degree plus temperatures. Nearby is Cenote Azul, where you can cool off for the afternoon. So there's actually cenotes all over the Yucatan, and a lot of them are bigger ones you have to propel in, which we did earlier. This one's a nice, easily accessible one. Uh, there's a jump that's about 20 feet up. I saw a six-year-old do it like five minutes ago, so I think I can handle it. Talvez. 